How are you all doing? Um, just want to do a quick vlog. We've had um, a lot of clients, um, consultants in particular, talking about doing retrofit projects where obviously you're trying to get away from fossil fuels. So in a lot of, for example, old buildings, schools, um, colleges and so on, where there are sustainability um, guidelines um, and retrofits uh, in the pipeline. Um, a lot of people are concerned about the old systems that were designed with, you know, maybe even 80, uh, 80 degrees supply return of maybe 60 degrees. So you have a much higher temperature, a much higher delta T. Um, so there's concerns about whether you can make heat pumps work. Um, we've looked at quite a few projects and um, more often than not, they will. Um, what we're finding is a lot of these old buildings, as leaky as they may be, we know the fabric heat losses are a lot higher than they are nowadays, but they've also been very much over-engineered and um, very conservative in relation to their sizing. So the best suggestion I can give at the moment, particularly where we still have relatively cold mornings, is do a trial. So if you have a building and you're not quite sure if you change to an air to water heat pump and um, the maximum temperature you're going to get out of an air to water heat pump is about 65 degrees C. And um, so my suggestion is change your set point on your boiler to 65 degrees C now. Do a trial whilst we still have relatively cool mornings and at least then you're going to see um, how, how the building will perform and if you can achieve your temperatures. Obviously just record the temperatures, record the ambient temperature, record the indoor temperature and see if it's sustainable. Um, and if it'll basically satisfy the load requirements. Because um, we're, we're looking at quite a few and um, there's, there's all sorts of things you can do uh, with regard to integration. So as I said, you typically will have a much lower temperature. Now you can of course go air to water heat pump to get up to 65 and you can then add on a water to water heat pump um, to go up to 80 degrees C. But obviously we want to avoid that if at all possible. If you don't need to do it, you know, why bother? So, um, Quite simply, um, there are other ways to get around the situations with regard to the high temperature and the, the, the high delta T and the lower flow rate. So we can introduce a secondary loop, a primary loop and a secondary loop where the heat pumps, you know, they won't operate with a 20 degree delta T. So the primary loop, you have a much smaller delta T, higher flow rate, and the secondary loop, then you would have, um, you know, a, 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 your higher delta T and lower flow rate um, without having to change all the pipework in the whole building. So there's things like that you can do. Um, obviously, VSDs can be put onto the secondary side. Um, dynamic set point as well. Um, so again, a lot of these were set at a particular set point and left at that. And you typically don't need um, the set point as high as, as it is. Um, I know in my house at home, um, I have a dynamic set point. And as the uh, ambient temperature is increasing, the, the, uh, the temperature on the boiler is decreasing. Um, so very often, the set point on my boiler at home isn't over about 40 degrees C. So even throughout a lot of the winter. So it most certainly is doable. So um, like I said, any, any uh, projects that you have in, with regard to retrofits, give us a shout. Um, my personal email is peter.mcmahon, that's M-C-M-A-H-O-N at E-I-C-L.ie, um, or the general one is chillers.eicl.ie, um, or just give us a call in the office. Uh, it's 01-8255-155, and we'd be delighted to help you out in any way we can. Okay, thank you.